there's only one snake in the whole of Africa capable of eating a human being. Fortunately, it would have trouble killing one. Bigger is not always better. In this case, not always more dangerous. This is an African rock python. This snake gets very big. They get five or six meters in length. This one's still fairly young, but it has a lot of teeth in the mouth, about a hundred little teeth, capable of inflicting a very painful bite. But because it has no venom apparatus, this is considered a harmless snake. And I'm only interested in the deadliest. idea for this trip is for me to cross from one side of Africa to the other looking for some of the most venomous species of snakes we have and do some really good photography on them. I'm going to attempt to find, catch and photograph seven of Africa's most feared snakes. Seven of the most venomous snakes in the world. I'm going to tell you why they're deadly. I'm even going to mark them out of ten. So in the end, I can finally reveal which is Africa's deadliest snake. I have the highest respect for snakes. You avoid snakes and snake bite at all possible cost. I'm just going to be as careful as I can and do my best. I, I, I am sure I will not get bitten. I'm going to take every precaution I can. My journey will take me all the way from my home on Namibia's skeleton coast, right across the continent to the forests of northern Zululand. But I'm starting my trip in my own backyard, in the brutal but beautiful landscape that is the Nama Desert. This is one of the driest, most desolate areas in the world, and yet there is animal life here. People seem to think that you just walk in the bush in Africa and you're in danger of snakes all over you. Snakes are very hard to find. None more so than the desert sidewinding adder. Using a unique side-to-side -side motion, it buries itself into the ground. Its distinctive scales blending perfectly with the hot sand. There are many different species of adder in the world, but this one is the smallest, which makes it even more difficult for me to find. That could be anything in that bit of sand over there, but it might also be a snake buried. But sometimes even a little piece of bush or something blows, gets stuck in the sand, and, and the sand blows around it and it, it makes a disturbance. Just the slightest indentation here. The wind has been very strong. All tracks have been moved away, but there's the slightest indentation. I think there's a chance that there is a snake under here. I'm gonna go very deep because I'm using my bare hands. Take a chance. There we are, there we are. I've got one. Here we go. That's what I want. Oh, and he's angry with me. I would love to get a strike. Come, 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 come. Oh. The sidewinder immediately shows its attitude. Just look how it leaps at the lens. It may be small, but it's still an adder, which makes it a very fast striking snake. Oh, you're biting at my lens. It's a... It also has an extremely toxic venom. But to get a good shot, go. I've got to get real close. There we go. Just take him by the tail and see what this guy does. Got it. I got it and he nearly got me. <laughs> Not a good idea to get bitten by him for a photograph, but if you get bitten by a snake like this, it would be very painful. So be very careful with him. All adders are dangerous. You shouldn't fool with them. Okay, I'm going to try one more time. I want him to strike right into the lens really close, and I'm going to just touch him. I'm going for one more shot. I must feel that I've got this. 
Okay, take it. Ah, got me. Okay, let's see. He just got me with one fang. Right there. Luckily, it's just a scratch. It's grazed my skin with the edge of one fang. I'm convinced he was striking, defending himself quickly, just a quick strike, just a quick knock, and I pulled away pretty quickly. So I might have a little bit of a swelling there during the day, but I don't think I have to worry too much. All right, so it's entirely my fault. I had the snake teased up a little bit. Look at that, boy, you got me. You can be happy now. And I think after that, I can release him. I think I got my shot. I think I got my striking shot. And if all goes well, I'll still be alive tomorrow to do it again. I'm going to give each snake marks out of 10 in three different categories based on just how potentially dangerous I think they are. I'm giving the side winding at a 7 out of 10 for speed. It's a very fast snake for its size. Because the venom is not considered lethal to humans, it only gets 4 out of 10. But it still has a fast and accurate strike, 6 out of 10 for that which means the desert sidewinding adder gets a total of 17 points. That might not sound like much, but you've got to remember that 80% of African snakes are considered harmless. Scoring anything more than 10 places you firmly in the elite. Well, I've been involved in snake photography for, for more than 10 years and involved with reptiles for 20 years or more. But the idea of this project is to actually photograph the most venomous snakes that we have in Africa. And most of those are right here in the southern tip of Africa. And from now on, they're all big ones. To search for the next snake, I'm going to drive 900 miles away from the arid desert and into typical South African scrub. This is the high felt. Home of snake number six, the Runkals. The Runkals is a spitting snake, the most dangerous spitting snake in the whole of Africa, but it also has another trick or two. That's a ringneck cobra or Runkals, and unless he's been injured, which I can't see anyway, he's probably only pretending to be dead. He's very, very clever, this one. He's pretending really well. He's hoping that you'll think he's dead and just go away. Look at this. Oh, we have a dead snake, see? For all intents and purposes, I have a dead snake here. Isn't that fantastic? What a thing. Now, that could fool anybody. I mean, a child or someone not knowing better could actually find something like this and pick it up. Take you about five minutes of playing with it before you actually get bitten by a snake like So it's a very dangerous thing if you don't know what to expect. This is a very, very dead snake. Isn't that fantastic? Just sometimes the mouth is really wide open and you get your foot in there, wow, it bites you like a shot. And just a bit, he's something to bite. Oh, he says, I got you, I got you, see that? Of course, the thickness of my soles means the snake can't actually get its fangs into me. And he lets go. And he would normally make a break for it, except I'm still here. All right, what I'm gonna do is just straighten him out, just to prove that he's a live snake. There, well, he's quacking, he wants to get going. But he doesn't like me being over here. It's a real big snake. I put him down, I just touch him again. Oops, he says, oh, I'm dead. Oh, he says, I'm dead, definitely I'm dead. He can't understand this. One more time, put him flat on his tummy. Watch, ah, oh, he's just dead. That's a dead snake, look at that. Ah, last throes of death, isn't that fantastic? There's only a few snakes in the whole world that do this, but the Runkles does it better than any other snake, that's for sure. Magnificent specimen. The right thing for me to do now is just walk away, leave the snake like this in a short period, he'll just right himself and be off. So I'll do that, let's see what happens. For a supposedly dead snake, the Runkles makes a speedy recovery. Normally it would make a quick getaway, but I'm still here. So he tries another ploy. He tries to blind me by spitting venom into my eyes. It's the snake's equivalent of mace. That Oh, full shot of venom right in my eyes, in my mouth. This is very unusual. It keeps coming towards me. Normally a snake would turn and run. Stop. 
Oh, oh, a lot of venom. Real good spit up. Oh, and again, on my hand. In my face. Ah. This is highly dangerous. If I get venom in a scratch or in my eyes, I'll be in serious trouble. Ah, my mouth is full of venom. Oh, full of venom. What a good snack. He's a real mean spitter when he wants to. When he's not scared. Oh, yes, he's getting brave. Oh, he keeps coming for me. He won't stop. Stand still. I want to look at you when you're posing. I want to take some pictures of you. Stop. Stop. Oh, wow. Venom again. Wow, he's got a lot of venom. Now we're standing. Now we're standing. Okay. My glasses are so full of sprayed venom, I can hardly see through them. Look at that. Now he's really mad. He says, I can't play dead. He doesn't believe me. And I want to get past him and he won't let me. So I'm going to kill him. You can spray venom. If venom gets into my eyes, of course, that's dangerous. Look at that. Look at that. He's looking just at me. Okay, flickering his tongue. Now he knows exactly where I am. He knows exactly where I am. Wow. Not spraying too much venom. He's being very cautious with his supply. He's actually wobbling. He knows I'm here. Should he go? Shouldn't he? Now he's really rattled. He's going to kill me because I wouldn't let him go. Let me just get my camera. All right. Now I expect to get a lens full of venom, but I'm going to try my best. Look how excited he is. He's actually excited. He's going to kill this guy. Ah. Missed it. He's quick. I just need to be quicker. One of the hazards with working with a spitting snake, just look at my camera, venom everywhere. I couldn't believe this, it went right past, right on the side here. It's all dried now, so this is at its most toxic. Uh, all the water is out of the venom. If you scratch this and it were to get into your bloodstream, that's, that's extremely dangerous. And it's, that's, that's part of the game. If you're doing a spitting snake, you can expect venom to be everywhere. If you look at these glasses, you probably see they're covered in venom. I don't know if you can actually see that in the light. There's a lot of venom on there. You see that? It's incredible. So I imagine that my whole face around is also covered with venom and such like, but it does no damage on the skin. But in the eyes, as I've explained, it would really be bad. It burns terribly. And if you don't wash that out very well, you'd be blinded. So right now, that's what I've got to go and do. Wash my glasses, wash my face, wash my clothes, wash my camera. It was a good day. The Runkals is fast. It's definitely worth seven out of 10. And not only is this venom highly toxic, it seems to be able to produce more of it than any other snake. Seven out of 10 again. But it's not got the best strike in the world. So I'll give it just six out of 10 for that. A total of 20 points for the wrinkles. It's another 300 miles westward again to the next snake. Now I've had a stroke of luck here, right here in this bush. Brand new, recently shed snake skin. Puff adder. And if you look very carefully, you'll see that the skin encompasses even the eyes, little caps that cover the eyes. Having this skin in my hand, in this condition, tells me with certainty that this snake is not too far away. Snake number five is the puff adder. The puff adder is responsible for most of the snake bite incidents in Africa. It has a terrible cytotoxic venom that spreads quickly, destroying tissue and blood vessels as it goes. It's an ambush predator, lying in wait for a rat or mouse to come too close. It's not a snake to get bitten by. You can see part of her body, just over there. She's tucked herself in between these rocks. I think I can move this rock, pull it out very carefully. I can't see her head. Yeah, there she is. He or she, oh golly, her head is right by my foot. I can already hear the distinctive puffing sound that gives the snake its name. They inflate themselves, then puff the air out in short bursts. Ooh, there we go, see the head? Wow, look at that, brandly new. This is definitely the snake from that skin. It's absolutely perfect. 
But now to just chuck it out of here a little bit. Oh, that's what I need. Okay. Got it. Wow. A beautiful, perfect example of a puff adder. Brand new skin. Beautiful chevron patterns. It's one of the best camouflage snakes in the world. They can fit in anywhere, amongst rocks, amongst sandy areas, amongst grass areas. They are slow moving normally in this way. See how they can walk in a straight line? They are very, very fast striking. This is one of the fastest striking snakes in the world. Probably been timed in the region of about seven meters per second. So you don't want to fool with the snake and it has a terrible, terrible poison. It has a cytotoxic poison, a tissue destroying poison, which causes terrible damage to the limb. Very often amputation is necessary after a bad bite. Okay, I would like to expose these fangs to just give you an idea of what it looks like. I must be very, very careful. I've only got the stick here at the moment, but I'll have to make do with that. Come on, put your head down for me, please. Just put your head down. There we go. That's the most dangerous moment. Once I've got that there, okay. Not a perfect grip like I'd like. There we go, okay. I've actually got a flask right here. All I need to do is bring that snake's lips close to this flask, onto the edge, and that gives her the feeling to bite. And if we have luck, she's going to grip onto that and bite and inject a few drops of venom into there. All right, and that way I'll be able to expose those fangs and show you really clearly. I'm just steady myself so that I don't have any accidents here. The fangs are very large. I'm bringing her over, let's see if she'll bite for us. Ah, oh, an incredible amount of venom. Right squirted onto my hand. There's drops of venom outside the flask. She's bitten right past the flask. Her fangs are so big. Some of the venom went in, some is outside. Unbelievable. Look at those fangs. On the right side, she's got two fangs because snakes shed their fangs. If that front fang is broken or blunted, within a short period, that second fang will be following up. In the center of the mouth, there's a lot of smaller teeth all over here. Those are just for gripping the prey, but look at those fangs. Aren't they fantastic? Wow, and look at the venom on the side of the glass over here. She gave such a squirt. Thank goodness I've got no cuts on that hand. Otherwise, I'd have venom in me right now. I must be very, very careful. So the snake bites, injects that venom into its prey, and then when it lets go, it folds the fangs back up on their little hinges. Incredibly dangerous snake. A bite like that, the amount of venom she's given here. Oh man, I can't tell you how bad that would be. Okay, I'm going to put this down. I need to go and wash this venom off my hands as well. It's not a good idea to have a vast amount of venom like that. See how she's flickering her tongue out, just smelling, checking out. Very, very well behaved otherwise. She's not wriggling and panicking. A fantastic specimen. I'm so happy to find this. The puff adder is a slow mover. It relies on its camouflage to stay out of trouble. So just four out of ten there. But a bite from a snake like this is excruciating and deadly. 8 out of 10. And no snake strikes faster. 21 feet per second. That's got to be worth 9 out of 10. So my score for the puff adder is 21. When I released the snake, she was puffing a lot, puffing all the time. And I realized suddenly that she's actually very, very hot. So what I did, I decided to spray her with a bottle to actually cool her down a bit. And then suddenly she started drinking. Now she's lifted her head right up and she, if you look at her lips very carefully you'll see that slight scooping motion that snakes use to drink. And even though she's a wild snake and I've actually fooled around with her a bit, she's quite happy to be right up against my hand as long as she's getting a little bit of water. Can you believe that? A wild animal like this drinking water from my hand virtually. And I've got my hand right here and I have no fear at all because I know she's not interested in biting me. She's just happy to get some water. Very unusual to see this. Yeah, she's feeling a lot better. Okay. Good girl. This is so unusual, I just had to photograph it. Never mind the striking shot. This is something really special. Snake number four is the snouted cobra. The snouted cobra is one of the most widely distributed snakes in Africa. It's also one of the most infamous. This is the snake believed to have killed Cleopatra. Their normal victims, however, are mice and frogs. Though like many serpents, they're quite prepared to eat other snakes. 
even their own kind. I've crossed the border back into Namibia again, going about 500 miles to the north. Ah, this is a young, a very young, snouted cobra. Cobras can actually only lunge. It's a defensive move and then he tries to get away. He makes himself look as big as possible by making a hood. Snakes get tired very quickly because they actually only have one functional lung. So if you can just run him a little bit tired, he'll relax a bit. But a little one like this pretty nervous. He wants to get away. Of course, it's a highly, highly venomous snake. They have a neurotoxic poison, two little fangs right in the front of the mouth. And a bite from this snake, one drop of venom, be enough to kill an adult human being. There we go. He's not too bad tempered. He's just a bit nervous, defending himself. Very young little guy. I think what I'll do with this guy is actually let him go, because I'm really hoping to get something bigger to photograph. I'd like a snake standing a bit higher or a bit broader. But he's very cheeky. If you listen carefully, you can actually hear him hiss. Completely exhaling the whole lung. And again. All right, interesting thing about a cobra, you keep his concentration with one hand and he can't see your other hand and you could actually touch him behind the head. It's a very wily little guy, this. You can actually touch him behind the head and stroke him. He doesn't know my hand is there, he's watching my other hand. <sighs> Mustn't do that with a wild cobra too often. <laughs> You're a pretty boy, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, he's really feisty, but he's smaller than what I'd like to get. So I'm going to just move him out into the branches here and let him go. Because I'm really looking for a big cobra. Some of the cobras that come down this valley into the riverbed here can be really big. They've got plenty of food here, plenty of mice. And so they do very well. So what I'll do, come, come this way. I want your tail, come on. Come on. There you are. Okay. I'll just put him in a bush here and let him go off in his own time while we look for something else. These dry river beds are a perfect habitat for snakes. Plenty of food and no interference from humans. But it's getting very hot. It's going to be tough to find a snake just now. This is more like it. Just come out from under this log. This is more like what I'm doing. Oh. That is it. There's a real adult size snouted cobra. Are you a tame one, a calm one, hey? Oh yes. Well oh, that's a beautiful hood now. That's more like it. That's more like an adult size. He's probably close to two meters. Hey, behave yourself. Here we go. Look at that. Come on. That's a beautiful snake. He's very sure of himself, sure of his size and his strength and his venom power. He wants to move away, but he's still watching me. This is what I want to photograph. And just get him to relax. But see how he's not bad tempered like the little one? Come and look at me. I'll slowly move around and you can get a good look at his hood. Look at that hood. Look at that hood. Isn't he beautiful? It's all a warning. If this snake was now faced by a mongoose, he'd probably be in trouble. Because a mongoose is able to wait for that strike to come low. Oh, I've been bitten, guys. I've been bitten. For sake, guys. Come here quickly. Quickly go into the car. I want the crepe bandage. Open it. Yeah. Real tight. Yeah. Pull it tight. Somebody watching that cobra? Oh God, I mustn't be venom in the vein. Anti-venom was on hand, and the local hospital had been forewarned. But it was still a 40 minute drive away. If the venom went untreated, I could be dead in half that time. Immediately I was alerted to the fact that a vein had been penetrated. That is your most frightening scenario because if venom entered directly into a vein, I could be dead within 10 minutes. However, I saw that it was a cut. It wasn't an actual injection. We had, the fang had cut my finger. 
and having sliced the vein. So in, in, in that way, the vein actually helped to flush out any venom that might have been lying around. It pumped it out. And then applying suction later with a little sucking machine. So all in all, uh, somebody's looking after me. Okay. It will never happen again. Never again. This is it. I'm getting too old for this. Nevertheless, just two short hours later, I was back out in the field. Well, it's been a traumatic day. I don't need all of that bandage, but I came to get a photograph and I intend to get it. That cobra's so big, he's so fantastic. I've got my camera, I'm back, and I'm gonna get this damn shot. Snakes don't move very much during the heat of the day. I knew that cobra would be pretty much where I left it. Okay, I'm gonna take him into open ground for a better chance of getting a photograph. Let's see if I can just get him to make a hood for you one more time. Go on. Gotta stand still for the photograph. Otherwise. There we go. Come, come, come. Very reluctant to have his photo taken, but I insist on at least one. And one more time, I'll try one more time. Even if he just walks into the camera, that's it. I hope I'm getting it accurate. Back up. There was, there was. Okay. okay, I've shot a whole lot of shots hoping that it's just catching him on more or less center, center screen. He's a dangerous boy, but he is fantastic. He's taken a lot of nonsense from me today. That's nice. That's nice. Good. Good. One more. Good. Look at him, eh? Still on guard. Doing like snakes do when the snake charmers play their flutes. People think they can hear the music. Snakes are deaf, they hear no music. He only watches the movement. So if you move your flute from side to side, the snake follows the flute, not the music. <laughs> okay, you're a beautiful boy. Thank you for those photographs. And the finger. I'm gonna let him go because he deserves his freedom. He's put up with a lot of nonsense. If you look at his chest, beautiful. I'm gonna leave him just like that. Thanks, big boy, you're free to go. <sighs> the snouted cobra is fairly quick, certainly quicker than I was expecting, so I've given it a respectable 6 out of 10. And I rate it even higher for venom, 7 out of 10 there. But it's the strike that impressed me most. Sending me to the hospital was worth 8 out of 10. A grand total of 21. I'm now more than halfway through my quest. I've covered a distance of over 2,000 miles and I've been on the road for 9 weeks. I've been cruising around for months uh, in the bush, spending as much time as I can trying to find the right areas and then still having to find specific places where it's most likely a snake might be hiding. So very important, spend as much time in the field, camera ready on hand and just stay out there until you get exactly what you want. There well, look up in the tree, you see, it's a worm slump. The Boomslang is an arboreal snake, a tree-dwelling snake. It also has the most concentrated venom of any snake in the world. Moving rapidly through the treetops, it searches for its prey of lizards and small birds.
I have to try and catch the snake while climbing a tree with one hand and holding my snake tongs with the other. I can I get it with my hand first. There we go. And if I can just hook the tongs around him, I can hook him out a little bit. Oh, he's very prehensile. Ah, oh, there we go. Got him. Let's keep his head away from me. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Probably a male worm slime. If you take venoms drop for drop, this is probably the most venomous snake in the world. In other words, the least amount of venom needed to kill, let's say, an adult human being. This is the snake to do that. And interesting above that is that it's a backfang snake. Because most other backfang snakes in the world are actually completely harmless to human beings with a mild venom. Wormslung venom is extremely toxic. It's a very powerful hematoxic, a blood-destroying poison. And it probably would only have to scratch you with a fang to inject or to leave enough venom behind to kill an adult human being. Quite agile, of course. Because I don't qualify as food, the Wormslung is yeah. fairly relaxed. Too beautiful, eh? But make no mistake, I'm still in danger. This is the most venomous snake in the world. Just a nick could kill me. But I want to get even closer. I'm going to very carefully insert the forceps and show you those back fangs. Just below the eyes. Maybe I can just lift them. There we are, always lifting them myself. Right in the back. Very long little fangs, but right in the back under the eye. And that's how they kill their prey, by chewing those fangs in. The worm slung has to chew because its fangs are primitive. Instead of the usual miniature hypodermics, the teeth are simply grooved. The snake can't just strike out at its prey. It needs to wait until a good area is exposed and then grab on. Once it's got it, it does not let go. It keeps chewing working venom deep into the tissue. Really keen to get his photo taken, see? Come on now. That's fantastic. Are you beautiful? Yeah. Yeah, come look at me, come on. Lift up a bit. But if I can get a good one right in the face, come on. Wormslung are not aggressive snakes. Highly venomous, but certainly not aggressive. You've got to really fool around with them and look for trouble before you're going to get bitten by one. So this is exactly what I'm doing, but I must try not to get bitten. Just a gentle, close movement. That's it, that's it. Oh, beautiful. Right in the screen. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. That's not bad at all. The Wormslung is quick and agile, an incredibly lithe snake. I'll give it 8 out of 10 in terms of speed. And drop for drop, it has the most toxic venom of any snake in the world, so for that it has to get a perfect 10. But it can't inject that venom. It has to keep hold of its victim and chew the venom in. So just 4 out of 10 for strike. The Wormslong scores 22. And I start to think about the next snake. When I was bitten once by a gaboon viper, just a scratch from a fang, just a scratch. To describe the pain I experienced with that for the next three, four days is like taking your hand, sticking it into a fire and unable to bring it out. It is the most excruciating pain. That gaboon viper just scratched me with its fang. If it had actually penetrated two fangs, bitten me full in the hand, I would have probably lost my hand. It would have been amputated because the damage would have been so bad. It's a cytotoxic poison, a tissue destroying poison. When you've experienced something like that, you, you're always nervous. Snake number two is the snake I'm most nervous about, the gaboon viper. The Wormslung may have the most potent venom, but a gaboon bite would cause terrible tissue damage and pain. This snake can have fangs up to two inches long and a strike faster than the eye can see. Increasingly rare, they can only be found in deep jungle habitat which means I have finally reached the east coast and the rainforest of St. Lucia estuary. There we go. There's a snake. There she is. She's going to get away. The chances of me actually finding a gaboon were slight. That's why I just had to go for it. I got it. Ah, a fantastic female. 
Kaboon Viper. See his short tail? Definitely a female. Males have got a much longer tail. A little bit nervous, a little bit rattled, but she's not actually striking me. She just wants to get away. I must be very careful. These snakes are highly, highly venomous. One of the most beautiful snakes in the world and have the longest fangs of any snake in the world. A large specimen, a bit bigger than this, might have fangs up to five centimeters in length. Can you imagine that? Two inches long. But look at her, she's not even attacking me. She's just getting away if she can. They're so beautiful, they're sometimes called butterfly adder. And you can see why, you just have to look at the colors on her body. Wow, they've got hinging fangs, large hinging fangs, just like the puff adder, but much, much bigger. Fold it up against the top of the mouth and she can strike at about seven meters per second. Enormous, shoot the fangs out, pierce, pull back. And they have a very powerful cytotoxic, neurotoxic venom combination, double trouble. It's like getting bitten by a puff adder and a cobra at the same time. She seems to be okay. I just want to bring her closer to the camera so you can have a real good look. See the nose horns? See the nose horns she's got? Look at that. Right on the tip of her nose. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? Flickering with the... Look at that. Flickering her tongue, smelling. What's going on here? I've never been picked up by a human being before. Isn't she fantastic? Unbelievable. These snakes are so rare now. Their numbers have been drastically decimated. The, 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 the forest where they live here has been invaded by people and, and deforestation has destroyed their habitat. So you have very, very little area left for these snakes and we have very few of them left at all here in Southern Africa. So this is a, a fascinating, fantastic, rare occasion. I cannot believe I actually found one. I thought in the water she's going to get away from me. That's why I just took my chance and went for it. I just put her down here and let her walk away in her own time so that I can do some really good photos of her. Just going to leave her for a minute and get my camera and do some pictures. Beautiful snake, absolutely beautiful. This is so exciting, I just can't tell you. Fantastic, no one, no one will believe I found a Gaboon Viper swimming in the pool. The Gaboon Viper appears docile and moves leisurely. I'll give it just five out of 10 for speed. But what a bite. Of all the snakes I've tackled, this is the one I'd least like to get bitten by. Nine out of 10 for its incredibly painful and destructive venom. And it's fast too, just as fast as our previous quicker strike of the puff adder. So another 9 out of 10. This gives the Gaboon Viper a total of 23. Well, now normally, on most of the snakes I've been working with, I've been concentrating on getting a striking pose, if possible. But with a Gaboon Viper like this, especially this female who's so well behaved, there's no chance she's going to strike at me. But the main thing about Gaboon Vipers anyway is how well they camouflage. So I'm going to rather just take some beautiful pictures of her almost invisible position here to give people an idea of exactly what these guys look like in the forest. may have crisscrossed Southern Africa, but there's still one more thing to do. I've got to confront the most feared snake of all, one of the most dangerous snakes in the world. The encounter keeps preying on my mind. I've been bitten twice on this trip. If any other snake is capable of nailing me, it's this one. Which brings us to number one, Africa's deadliest snake of all. No question about it, it has to be the black mamba. I've been putting this off, I must admit, I'm a bit ashamed to say that, but I'm, I'm nervous of black marmots. Everybody's nervous of black marmots. It's still the, the fastest moving, quickest killing snake we have anywhere in Africa. And I've come to this area and I've come at the right time, early morning, because the cooler the snake is, the better chance I've got of handling it. And they come out and bask in the early morning sun, I've got a good chance of seeing them. In this area, I am assured there are marmots because the locals have told me that they see marmots here. I'm going to try my very best this morning to finally find and catch a black mamba and do some serious photography with the most dangerous snake in Africa.
Oh, that's fantastic. Look at that, you can even see the little fangs just sticking out there. See, a mamba also makes a slight hood, not as much as a cobra, but if he gets rattled, he just widens the neck just a little bit. Very fast strikers, the fangs very far forward. I'll try and show you just now. He needs only a touch like that, and you get both fangs in, no problem at all. That's as close as you can get to looking into the face of a black mamba. You see, I never let my stick go, though. I don't take a chance with a snake like this. This guy's about three quarters grown. He can still get another meter onto him. Still cool in the morning and not too badly behaved at all. Really nice guy. Looks like a male, young male. Oh, but he's posing so beautiful. This is very unusual. See how he goes to the tongs? And look at that. He's actually just waiting his chance. He's not a fool. He knows if I come too close and hurt him, he can nail me, no problem. But he doesn't even have to run away if he doesn't want to. Problem is to take him behind the head very carefully so that he doesn't hurt himself or me. He doesn't like that. Bad catch. Have to get this just right, otherwise I might damage the snake. Okay, we're looking good. We're looking good. We've got three meters of black mamba here. <sighs> All right, hold on to him. He's very, very strong, incredibly strong, very prehensile. See how he's holding my hand there? What I need to do is lift that scale very carefully just to expose those fangs. There we are. There you can see the fangs. When the snake bites, that nose pushes back like that, allowing him to have full access to those fangs. He's actually dropped a few drops of venom there now. And that's the fangs. Very far forward, very dangerous position. The snake from a standing high position can strike out and zap those fangs in and pull them out very, very quickly. You'd feel the effects of a bite from a snake like this within five minutes of being bitten. I'm going to release those fangs again. Just, ah, oh, there it goes. And his body's like steel, you can just feel it, it's like a rubber band here, yeah. like, like spring steel, it's unbelievable. You get a green mamba as well, but they are not as big as the black mamba, and their venom is not as potent. A lot of people don't know that. Green mamba is not as dangerous as the black mamba. And a four meter black mamba can stand up two meters high, could literally bite you in the face, that's very dangerous. The other stories you hear about mambas outrunning horses and things like that are not true. This is one of the fastest moving snakes for sure but it could not outrun a human being going flat out. Especially if he's got a mamba on his tail. You can just see this body. You can see the full length, he's curling a very prehensile tail. They can climb trees very well, etc. but they actually are snakes who prefer to be on the ground. All right, so once I've uncurled him here, I'm going to just release him on the spot and keep an eye on him for a short while. First, I've got to just get my hand away real quick. Okay, that's fine. You can just relax in that position. He's in such a, such a good boy, this. I don't want him to suppose we like. Fantastic stuff. He's such a beautiful boy, I'm so glad I found you. That's a shot you cannot believe. Hey, that's so wonderful. This has got to be one more. Maybe I just can't resist one more. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. One more leads to one more, just a little bit closer. Okay. I'm very happy with that. That's very nice. The black mamba is the complete striker. First of all, it's one of the fastest moving snakes in the world, traveling at up to eight miles an hour. It has to be nine out of ten. And it injects vast quantities of highly toxic venom that goes to work extremely quickly. That's worth 10 out of 10. And though it's not quite as fast a strike as the Gaboon or Puff Adder, it's so accurate and can be so aggressive that it has to score a maximum 10 out of 10. That gives the Black Mamba a near-perfect 29 points. 
I knew early morning would be the best. I've never seen a mamba stand, actually stand and face me like this. Usually they're gone like a shot and you either get a chance or you don't and they let you have it and you've got to get out the way. This guy actually stood, he stood still over there and let me take pictures of him and everything. He was wary, he was watching me all the time. He's going to kill me if I get too close. But he knew I'm not a danger if I stay my distance. That was fantastic. I'll never get that again. In fact, the whole trip has been fantastic, a real adventure. I've been on the road for three months and covered over 3,000 miles. Along the way, I've uncovered the world's smallest adder, faced Africa's deadliest spitter, milked the world's fastest striker, and been close to death's door. I've pulled the world's most toxic snake from a tree, and the world's worst biter from a pool and finally got up close and personal with the deadliest of them all. Seven deadly snakes and seven very successful photographs. for 20 years or more but the idea of this project is to actually photograph the most venomous snakes that we have in Africa most of those are right here in the southern tip of Africa and from now on they're all big ones to search for the next snake I'm going to drive 900 miles away from the arid desert and into typical South African scrub this is the high felt home of snake number six the Runkals. The Runkals is a spitting snake, the most dangerous spitting snake in the whole of Africa, but it also has another trick or two. That's a ring cobra or Runkals, and unless he's been injured, which I can't see anyway, he's probably only pretending to be dead. He's very, very clever, this one. He's pretending really well. He's hoping that you'll think he's dead and just go away. Look at this. Oh, you have a dead snake, see? For all intents and purposes, I have a dead snake here. Isn't that fantastic? What a thing. Now, that could fool anybody. I mean, a child or someone not knowing better could actually find something like this and pick it up. Take you about five minutes of playing with it before you actually get bitten by a snake like So it's a very dangerous thing if you don't know what to expect. He's a very, very dead snake. Isn't that fantastic? Just sometimes the mouth is really wide open and you get your foot in there, wow, he'd bite you like a shot. And just a bit, he's something to bite. Oh, he says, I got you, I got you. See that? Good for me to find. That could be anything in that bit of sand over there, but it might also be a snake buried. But sometimes even a little piece of bush or something blows, gets stuck in the sand. And, and the sand blows around it and it, it makes a disturbance. There's just the slightest indentation here. The wind has been very strong. All tracks have been moved away, but there's the slightest indentation. I think there's a chance that there is a snake under. I'm going to go very deep because I'm using my bare hands. Take a chance. There we are. There we are. I've got one. There we go. That's what I want. Oh, and he's angry with me. I would love to get a strike. Come, 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 come. Oh. The sidewinder immediately shows its attitude. Just look how it leaps at the lens. It may be small, but it's still an adder, which makes it a very fast striking snake. Oh, you're biting at my lens. It's a... It also has an extremely toxic venom. But to get a good shot, go. I've got to get real close. There we go. Just taking by the tail and see what this guy does. Got it. I got it and he nearly got me. <laughs> Not a good idea to get bitten by him for a photograph, but if you get bitten by a snake like this, it would be very painful. So be very careful with him. All adders are dangerous. You shouldn't fool with them. 
Okay, I'm going to try one more time. I want him to strike right into the lens really close and I'm going to just touch him. I'm going for one more shot. I must feel that I've got this. Okay, take it. Ah, got me. Okay, let's see. He just got me with one fang. That there. Luckily, it's just a scratch. It's grazed my skin with the edge of one fang. I'm convinced he was striking, defending himself quickly, just a quick strike, just a quick knock, and I pulled away pretty quickly. So I might have a little bit of a swelling there during the day, but I don't think I have to worry too much. All right, so it's entirely my fault. I had the snake teased up a little bit. Look at that, boy, you got me. You can be happy now. And I think after that, I can release him. I think I got my shot. I think I got my striking shot. And if all goes well, I'll still be alive tomorrow to do it again. I'm going to give each snake marks out of 10 in three different categories based on just how potentially dangerous I think they are. I'm giving the sidewinding at a 7 out of 10 for speed. It's a very fast snake for its size. Because the venom is not considered lethal to humans, it only gets 4 out of 10. But it still has a fast and accurate strike, 6 out of 10 for that which means the desert sidewinding adder gets a total of 17 points. That might not sound like much, but you've got to remember that 80% of African snakes are considered harmless. Scoring anything more than 10 places you firmly in the elite. Well, I've been involved in snake photography for, for more than 10 years and involved with Reveal, which is Africa's deadliest snake. I have the highest respect for snakes. You avoid snakes and snake bite at all possible cost. I'm just going to be as careful as I can and do my best. I, I, I am sure I will not get bitten. I'm going to take every precaution I can. My journey will take me all the way from my home on Namibia's skeleton coast, right across the continent to the forests of northern Zululand. But I'm starting my trip in my own backyard, in the brutal but beautiful landscape that is the Namib Desert. This is one of the driest, most desolate areas in the world, and yet there is animal life here. People seem to think that you just walk in the bush in Africa and you're in danger of snakes all over you. Snakes are very hard to find. None more so than the desert sidewinding adder. Using a unique side-to-side -side motion, it buries itself into the ground. Its distinctive scales blending perfectly with the hot sand. There are many different species of adder in the world, but this one is the smallest, which makes it even more difficult. There's only one snake in the whole of Africa capable of eating a human being. Fortunately, it would have trouble killing one. Bigger is not always better. In this case, not always more dangerous. This is an African rock python. This snake gets very big. They get five or six meters in length. This one's still fairly young, but it has a lot of teeth in the mouth, about a hundred little teeth, capable of inflicting a very painful bite. But because it has no venom apparatus, this is considered a harmless snake. And I'm only interested in the deadliest. idea for this trip is for me to cross from one side of Africa to the other looking for some of the most venomous species of snakes we have and do some really good photography on them. 
I'm going to attempt to find, catch and photograph seven of Africa's most feared snakes. Seven of the most venomous snakes in the world. I'm going to tell you why they're deadly. I'm even going to mark them out of ten. So in the end, I can finally...